Hi, welcome back to Sound of Motors. We've got a Nissan Qashqai 2016 1.2 turbo petrol. Very problematic engine, let's put it that way. But this one come up with a bit of a rattle when you start up. And uh, quite a common thing on these engines is actually a timing chain rattle. So I'll, I'll start it up and just, um, just see. can hear it you can physically hear the rattle that is a typical timing chain rattle <coughs> yeah so normally timing chain channel probably will be right out and you can pick it up the chain and it will be slack and it will be rattling about so I would rather not run it for too long yeah, I don't want to run it for too long because if the timing slips, then mm, we're opening another can of worms then. So I'd rather do it before it slips. So, but at the moment it's fine. So what I need to do now, start stripping it. What's the cause for the display? Uh, normally the cause could be uh, lack of oil changes or wrong oil used. And um, it's just general wear and tear also. But in these engines, you pretty much ex expect, expect it to have a chain replaced at some point. If you don't keep up with your service schedules or use the wrong oils, then the timing chain will not last. <clears throat> Luckily, this is a Qashqai, even though it's the same engine like in the Duke, but on the Qashqai, it's got a tiny bit more room and makes it everything so much easier just that extra inch or something of room but makes it a lot easier to work on you don't have to cool drain the coolant on these ones even though the water pump could be on the way you just take the water pump sprocket or not the pulley off it's unbolt so you can leave the water pump alone so you don't have to change it but you must change drain the oil though if you don't drain the oil and open the front cover, all that oil just going to come down. Guess how I know that. <laughs> yeah, the first one I've done, I've done exactly that. Took the front cover off and all the oil just went everywhere. <clears throat> yeah, so, yeah, drain the oil. It's easy to do. And, um, yeah, so let's start taking it apart. Uh, yeah, please do subscribe, follow, like, keep up with us. Right, one thing we do need is an axle stand. <laughs> oh, they're not very easy to remove them covers. Easy to put on, but not easy to remove. pins you've got the screws this one even got self tappers as well oh, got a bit of an oil leak as well yeah you've got a bit of an oil leak yeah, it could be from the oil filter It's all a bit oily. But, well, we removed all of that. Now we still need to remove the mud guard as well. That needs to come off or move to the side. So many covers, so many clips. Job itself isn't big, <laughs> in theory. Half of it just is spending on doing this, all this on the trays. And guards. 
Вот. take it right out that's enough as long as we can get to there that's fine right so now the hard bit is all over taking all them guards and under trays off oh it's a very involved job <laughs> we've got a different combinations of different screws push pins and Putting them in is easy, you just push it in and push the button in the middle, done. But pulling them apart is not so easy. Now we need to drain the oil. That's probably hasn't had a service for a while, that's probably why the timing chain is rattling. If the oil filter is, is leaking, it means the seal is seal on the oil field is perished it means it hasn't been changed for a long time it's a square drive for the sun plugs eight mil square drive there's your sun plug well it does look very dark and smells very petrol -y. that pretty much confirms my suspicion that it hasn't been done for a while the oil change but while oil is draining I can strip some bits of the top The only bolt bolt that's actually facing down from the cover the rest of them all kind of that way <clears throat> with this aircon pipe out of the way, out of the way as well oh there's a bracket missing for the headlamp I'm broken rather see So this bit can be, I don't have to move it out of the way, so at least it's just loose and because once you're taking that engine mount off, it, it, it can't be on the way. Unplug this PC, you know, tank ventilation, so there was solenoid or undo this out of the way, might even take the bracket off. Just to make it easier. Less, thing, less things on the way, better. Let's hope we will more or less finish draining so. I need to put the sun plug back in because I have to jack up the engine. Once I've done it, the job, I'm gonna open the sun plug off again and drain a little bit more out. Because when you wash, wash the chain, a bit of a cleanness will go in into the sump. I'm gonna open it again, but not yet. Now I need a jack. When you put anything under the sump, put like a rag or something, stops it from slipping and stops it from damaging the, the sump also. Right, you just need to release the pressure off the, off the engine mount and now I can take the engine mount off. 16 mil. Well, probably do need extension. If 
you leave all the bolts in, then you definitely won't get them wrong. Now we'll take these little covers for VVT sprockets off. It's like oil channel covers. One of them, one of them, they're different. So you won't make the, they've got little pins at the back, so they can only go on one way. So we'll take them off. Eight mil. These bolts have got a bit of a Loctite on them. And that's why it takes a bit of a effort for them to come undone. I have to do it by hand. Trouble is with this battery tools or pneumatic tools for that matter if it's got a bit of a spring in this in the in the thread it doesn't want to undo same like when you have a rock of rubber bush or something if it starts springing it just stops replacement Ooh, this one actually works. Lovely when the tools work. Yeah, I don't like putting them on the floor. Make sure you've got the O-rings here. There's two O-rings here, one O-ring there. Make sure they come out. And in here. There you go. They're out. to undo this VVT solenoids. Leave them alone. Don't take them out. Just need to unplug them. Oh, tight. It's, you have to squeeze that little lever literally push that lever down but being upside down on the bottom it's not much of a leverage there so it's quite tough to come out I have to undo this wiring harness because that's actually pushed into the cover out of the way it's obviously it's still at the back up here as well I'll have to undo that when I remove the cover a bit because it's very limited axis there right now I can start taking the auxiliary belts off take this cap off because that I'd like pulley I have to come off as well. While the belt is on, I'm gonna try to crack these uh, bolts on the water pump pulley off. But sometimes they come undone quite easily. Not the case now. I'll just have to wedge it 
wedge a screwdriver between two other bolts and it comes undone then it just needs to be loosened Right. I'll take them off completely when the when the belt is off. It makes no difference right now. Right now, I can drop it down a bit and take the belt off from underneath. It's easier. I'll drop the engine down. You have to keep watching on all the pipes and stuff. Yeah, you see all this water pipes and pipes around here you don't want to over over stretch them you don't want to make damage more than it's already has been done you need to just ratchet in a 16 mil socket and detention this tensioner Now, I can take the water pump sprocket off as well from the top, from underneath makes no really difference as long as it can come out. I need to drop the engine down a bit more. There you go. have to take the uh, tensioner off as well the idler the tensioner all of that needs to come off tensioner only got like a 13 mil bolt in the middle and it comes off here's your tensioner idler is the same thing Oh, it's a bit tight. That's the idle. Yeah, behind the idler, you've got three bolts on actually holding the cover back on. And then bolts need to come off. Again, it's easier to get to them from underneath while engine is lowered down. With these bolts you need to have a good socket because if you don't I've had them before where well, they just round off and it's very difficult to access to them with any easy else because it's right behind the chassis and there is no really good access to it Not far off now for removing the front cover. Just need to undo the, the crankshaft sprocket. Not sprocket pulley. 19 mil socket and a decent gun. We'll get it undone. Oh. 
Sometimes the sprocket can get stuck. So if you wiggle it with the pry bar, but not not putting too much pressure on the, actually this cover. Otherwise, you can crack it. But in general, if you wiggle it, it comes undone. And that's it, it just comes off. Make sure that keyway stays in place. So you've got the keyway for the sprocket and the key is supposed to be attached to the crankshaft. So when you, especially when you assemble it, make sure it stays there because if it drops inside somewhere, then you can be in a bit of a pickle. And now I just need to undo all the front cover bolts two of them you can't get with any guns or anything they're just in the awkward position right that's why they need to come off by hand These 10 mil bolts, they're all the same. So they're all, all the covers, bolts around the 10 mil ones, they're all gonna be the same. The bigger bolts are different. They've got the five shorter ones and one longer one. So they, they need to be paid attention to, but these ones it don't matter. I'll do the rest of them. all the 10 mil bolts out now we can remove all the 13 mil bolts from the top well, I'll have to jack up the engine a bit for that so instead of you jacking up engine up and down up and down doing stages like if it's engine lower then I do everything from the bottom when the engine is high you just do everything from the top so that's why sometimes I just uh, and do everything I can so it just saves time and saves you jacking the engine up and down constantly because every time you jack the engine up you've got the chance that the jack can slip on the sump because this sump is kind of rounded see on this the top right bolt that's a long bolt you've got all them five bolts three lower two upper they're all the same but this one is longer but you can see because it sticks out further
And that's about it. That's all the bolts undone. Bit of a leverage because the cover is actually held on the silicon, so it will be a bit tight. But always comes undone. But there is also this wiring attached to this cover still. So now move it out of the way. get to it now. Much easier. That's it. And now let's have a look at the chain. Yeah, see? Straight away. You can move it with your fingers. You shouldn't be able to do. See the attention there? Huh? You should not be able to do that. That's not even tight. That's not even touching the tensioner. Let's have a look. See up here. See, there's a tensioner. There's a guide. Not attack. Not touching. So, and there's the rattle you can hear. And very loose. Without even taking it apart, I could, I could have told that. That chain is not very good. Right, you've got little cutouts on the sprocket. There is one here, one there. That's your timing marks. There's one here, there's one there. Yeah, so that's your timing marks. So now we're going to turn the engine so they're actually facing up a bit. Because it's not, it doesn't really matter too much, but it will ease the installation quite oh look at that guide <laughs> all split so but to turn the engine i'm gonna just put this uh bolt back in the crank pulley bolt back in And I'm going to turn the engine. See how easy it is to, for, for the chain to jump because it's just rattling. There's like no tension whatsoever. There we go. That'll be, be about okay. You see there, there's your timing marks. On the brand new chain you'll get color-coded links like that like this one and like that one and they have to line up with these marks on that's the two ones but i'll show that in a minute once to clean it all up and it's the same at the bottom you've got a little arrow on the on the lower sprocket but i'm not going to even gonna try to mark it or anything because i'm not even sure if the timing is skipped or not I just leave it as it is. I'm just going to take it all off, throw it in the bin, well, recycling, and then uh, and then I'm going to clean it all up, and and then I'm going to put new chain on, and time it up with new chain on. That's supposed to be there.
see that tensioner now has got no pressure. It could potentially just fly out, but it doesn't. It doesn't really do anything. It's solid. It doesn't do a thing. That's supposed to be moving, but nothing happening. It's basically the tensioner has failed. It's like supposed to be a ratchet, like a ratchet mechanism in there. And that's ratchet not doing anything. Well, I don't know, ratchet itself probably does something, but the actual shaft itself is seized up. It's supposed to be out, keeping the tension on the, on the chain, but it's not doing anything. It's not very well. The guide just slides off. It's got no bolts or anything. It just literally slides off. I mean, that's, that's one of them. As you can see, that's split in half. When you put new one on, because this long end is facing up, just as a tip. Because if it's like in the box and you took that off and you drop it, and you'd be like, oh, does it go like that? Or can it go like that? Because it fits both ways. It potentially could fit this way as well. But that's not how it goes. It goes like that facing the chain from this end with the pointy end up yeah so this way would be wrong mm -hmm. there's your chain that's the, that's the colored links I was talking about there's one here one there and one at the bottom and that's how it goes. Not very well. And now we're gonna have to clean it all off. Because the, as I say, like, you know, everything is sucked there on the silicon. So all of that old silicon all needs to be picked, you know, cut off basically. See all of that, all of that needs to come off. Let's get the blade. It is easier to clean it with the chain off. You put all the chain back on, it's all timed up, and then you start scratching it, this, this thing, and it's all these guides on the way, and you just can't get to anything. So it's, it's very awkward as it is. Oh yeah, there, there's your water pump, by the way. So if you really need to change the water pump, you can, because it's right here, right now. But it has nothing to do with the timing chain. It's not run by the timing chain. You just run off the normal auxiliary belt. So there is no need unless you really want to. Or it's leaking. I mean, it's a good time to inspect the water pump now. 
make sure it's not leaking. Also, when you put the sealant on the back on, I suggest to put them both on this surface, you know, this surface, and also on the surface of the cover as well. So, because when you put the cover on, sometimes, yeah, on this surface as well, you put silicone here and there. Because sometimes when you put the, just put the, the silicone on one side and you put the cover in and you scrape some bits off, somewhere accidentally touching this sprocket or maybe touch the water pump a bit and then you put the cover on and a couple of weeks later all of a sudden you develop an oil leak because that tiny little bit that you just scraped off is not sealing properly and uh, and it's leaking so i normally put it on both sides and that way if one bit scraped off the other side is still it's still got silicone so it's not going to harm it as, well, as long as you don't put silicone into the chain itself because that's not going to be very good either right. it's one of them little job satisfactions when you the silicone that comes up in one long string <laughs> it's like bulk is gone when you clean it I know I'm using just a blade this blade isn't particularly sharp so I don't you know I don't you know, it's not gonna cut me but if you've got a brand new bl one of them blades and you accidentally go like that and go like that, you'll cut yourself to the bone. So don't <laughs> use a normal scraper. You see, I've got a normal scraper where the blade fits into. Well, I just can't get on with it. I prefer just to do it with normal blade. You, know, you can use a normal scraper like that, a scraper tool, and just scrape it like that. It's for your own safety better. I'm just an old school, so I prefer to do it with a blade. I feel more control. And because it isn't very sharp, and I'm wearing gloves, I get a low chance of cutting myself. Come end of the day, I think safety is it's your own responsibility. Common sense normally. Is the best safety agent for m for me. If you get a brand new blade and cut towards yourself very fast, you've got the chances are you you will slice yourself open, cut away from yourself, and you won't. But when the blade is not very sharp, and you and you can you control it, it doesn't really matter what you do. Right, now I've oh, got some brake cleaners. Brake cleaners, one of my favorites. 
fluids. It washes everything off. Brake dust, clutch dust, grease. We had some sort of oil leak somewhere. You can see a bit of a <coughs> leakage somewhere. <coughs> There's your VVT solidoids. There's no need to take them out at all. <clears throat> That's why you've got a, two channels and you go through the cover. It goes in the mid through this cover. You've got channels going into there. <clears throat> One thing we don't want is the, you know, the, the bits of silicone that, like that that you cut off sitting somewhere there, for example, or in the sump. Because that's the thing that's gonna block up your your you know little pickup for the oil. You don't want that. See when you wash that got some of that brake clean it's gonna go go in the sump and that's why i want to take the sump plug off again once i finish the job because there's still gonna be a residue of oil and some of the brake cleaners also you can see how dirty all of them bits are Don't change the oil regularly. That's what's going to happen to your engine also. Yeah, you've got a rubber gasket here, that part of a rocker cover gasket. Here's your oil pump tensioner and the oil pump chain. There's your oil pump there. Now we can start putting the chain back on. Renault. Renault engine. So that's why you've got a Renault parts. So you got your brand new tensioner, two guides, chain and the bolts. There are two bolts for the tensioner, then two bolts for your guide, one of the guides, the other, this guide, because that guide is just slots on. You've got a pin in the engine, obviously a crank, crank pulley bolt. There are your colored links. You've got the two purple ones and one orange one. Well, the purple one's obviously going to line up with the, with the top part. This is going on the crankshaft. So I'll start from the top, because you can't fit the top once the bottom is on. Obviously, when we're, we're taking it apart, you see the timing moved quite drastically. See, that's how much it's not lining up. So that, that colored link lined up now, but that one, I need to move the... It's a 14 or 12. Oh. Oh. Actually, 13. <laughs> there you go. You see the two links are lined up. Now I'm going to feed that to the bottom, I'm going to have to take my crank volley bolt out first, that's on the way. Now, 
See, it slips over, but now, oh yeah, it's actually the timing is lining up as well. A bit of a fluke there. You see the little arrow there? That arrow will line up with the with this orange link. Well, uh, I'll show that in a minute once I put the guides on because uh, everything is still going to be box. You're thinking, oh no, is it that way? Is it that way? Is it that way? Is it that way? <laughs> That's why pointy way end up and it sits that way. I'm only going to put a finger tight these bolts in for now just to, to have it in. Right. That just slots on this pin up here. Literally slide on. Yeah, if it doesn't fit like the tensioner, for example, the chain a bit slack here and very tight there, all you need to do is just pull on the chain itself and that in turn will turn the camshaft a bit. So make this end floppy and this tight. And then that guide just literally slots, slots, slides on. But I'll show you on the old guide, you've got a little groove there, like a little like in the bowling island, 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 you can put the, or lanes, you can put them boards up. So the same thing up here, you've got little boards. And the chain has to go in between because it's easy to put the chain on and it will sit like that. Like that, you see? When you pop that in and you're thinking, oh, that's in, but it's not. You need to go until actually the chain sits in between them two, two grooves like that because if you don't the timing can pop off or can move so not like that but it has to be there so when you put it on make sure you can feel the boards from the other side you can feel it you can move the chain and you can feel it it hits the boards yeah them little grooves And then we can put the, the tensioner back on as well. So the tensioner is on. I mean, it's only finger tight, but it's on. And now I need to make sure the chain is timed up still. So that that pin is fine. That's fine. You can actually push on that chain a bit. So if it's like a, sitting on a half a tooth, it's actually sinks in. So then the top, two top ones, hundred percent in line where it's supposed to be. Now then make sure that bottom is the same. There's your colored link. And there's your little mark right there, little triangle. And that's all perfectly fine. Again, just pull, pull some, pull on it manually. And there, it's all good. So now I'll do up all the guides and the tensioner. And once they're done up, I can release this little pin from the tensioner and self, uh, and uh, because it's spring loaded, it will just jump up and take up, take off this uh, slack. Yeah, the reason I left them all loose 
because sometimes things do happen you start putting things on and the change side is just skip a bit and once you skip very difficult to move it so sometimes you have to take all them covers off again just to move the chain to where it's supposed to be and it's so much easier when it's all finger tight double make sure it's still nothing moved nothing moved this is one of them times you don't want to get things wrong it doesn't matter if it takes you 10 minutes or half an hour but this is the most important thing uh, of whole build to, to get the whole timing right you just pull that little plug out bring it in and that's it you see the tension it just pops out and you can feel it with no oil pressure how tight that is that without me running the engine see can't move anything can't do anything chain sits in between the grooves on both sides nicely you can feel it and that's it the timing is done I mean if you really want to be fussy you can do is like a make some tipex marks right now and turn the engine over you know twice or uh, two two times 360 degrees <laughs> my brain switched off 720 degrees basically two revolutions at the bottom one revolution at the top and all the marks should line up again uh, their marks won't line up with the chain uh, with the because uh, once the chain starts moving that's it their marks are just moving wherever they want to they won't come back they will come back eventually maybe after like 459 revolutions or something i'm just took the number out of my head i don't know but yeah um, but the uh, but if you make some marks now you can turn the engine make sure it all comes back to the same marks that's the only way you can time it through the chain links but i've done so many of these engines so i don't need to do that any longer because you, once that's done you can't go wrong you know the timing is bang on now because everything is tight in between here and between there so you can't there's no slack there is no funny teeth in between the teeth or something i checked that before so now what we need to do is start putting the silicone on the cover the cover is nice and clean now while well, it's nice and clean we need to start putting some silicone on up here that's why I've got this new gasket up here I'll put them in the outskirts of the gasket as well. That's not necessarily. It's better to replace this seal, but we haven't got it. So, mind you, I, 
every time I've done it so far, I've never replaced this seal. I've never had problems either. So always put a little bit silicone on the outside. I don't want to put it on the inside. I don't want to block up all the oil channels. Now, because the rocker cover is sitting there, if you leave that dry, I've had it before, when well, it actually drags the rocker cover off, off its, off this um, position. So once the bit of a silicone is on here, it makes it slippery. This actually makes it rocker cover uh, gasket slide on the, onto it a lot easier right now I'll do here but as I said like you know I like to put on both sides because if you if you start feeding that through and you touch the water pump or you touch them sprockets basically you can um, you scrape some off and then you start leaking the oil so I'll put Put the oh, silicone on this side as well. Do the rest from underneath. Okay. Now to put the cover back in, the engine needs to be quite high. Now we need to feed the cover down, then go underneath there first, and then like push the bottom in and up because of this rocker cover gasket. Because if you'll do it straight away forward or start to put bottom in and then try to push that in, that rubber, cas uh, rubber gasket will be caught and get dragged out of its groove and pushed behind there. And it will leak through this area where the push gasket come out, came out. So it's a bit of a mission now. To start, you need to try to put it in so it doesn't scrape the silicone. It's the water pump you need to watch out for. All right. Now, 
to feed that in first. See that both top and feet fed in first. And now I need to kind of push up. See, remember them bolts are one one is long one goes right at the top here. The rest of them all the same. Yeah, don't do them up completely right now at this stage. You can just nip, nip up, or pull in a bit, because we need to put the bottom bolts in. So it's all sits squarely. Now I can do up the top bolts, since the bottoms are in, flush, while it, it's all jacked up, let's do the top bolts up. Sits nicely. Right, that's six bolts done up. Yeah, mustn't forget about these three little bolts in the middle. If you don't put them in, I can guarantee you an oil leak. Do them up from underneath but i've got three more 10 mil bolts to put in now we can drop the engine down and uh, sort out most of the stuff from underneath i'll put that bolt in as well
Okay. And that's all the cover bolts all done up. Come on, just start assembling all the auxiliary stuff. I'm gonna start with this idler pulley. Water pump pulley. Let's do them up as well. Yeah, to do this water pump, we initially wedge it a screwdriver in between the bolts. And that's it, it's a water pump pulley is done. Now we need to do the tensioner. With the tensioner, see we've got a little pin here and the center bolt. So it has to sit that way because the, on, the, on the body, you've got the two holes, you know, so you can't potentially fit it upside down. So it has to go this way. So I'm pointing down with this little pin pointing in the left hole or this sits at nine o'clock sort of thing. Oh, that's your tension is on. Here you come turning nicely. Alternator turns nicely still. And now crankshaft pulley. Got center bolt. Just kind of go through the oil. So when you take it out, you, the bit of oil comes out with it. So ideally I need to rinse that off. And again, you've got the keyway. Yeah, it's still there. Obviously, it's only going to go on one way. Crank pulley bolt in as well, no crank pulley. So now we can put the belt back on. Auxiliary drive. I'm not going to bother. I just normally did with this ratchet and hold it.
when you put the belt in, make sure it sits in the grooves, and that way, when if it sits in the grooves, the belt it's on its longest. Because if you put like one of the ribs of the belt somewhere in between the other ribs, I mean on the edge rather, then the belt becomes shorter than it need be and then it doesn't fit properly. Oh, slipped off here. <laughs> right. Yep, it sits where it's supposed to sit now. Belt is not the best. But say it doesn't really make difference I mean ideally that will give the time to put new one on so all the bits underneath more or less done the belt is on so now we can jack it up you put your wiring on harness back on That little pin goes in there. It's easy up here now. Take them off was hard, but pushing them on is quite easy. You just push them until it clicks. That's it. Now it's all clicked in. Got a little cap here. Got a little bolt. This bolt only holding this little harness, so it doesn't really need to be tight. And that's it. That's the wiring harness on. Now we can put this DDT, I don't even know what they're even called, covers, caps, guides. As you can see, you've got a hole here and that pin is there. So if you try to put it on the other side, that pin wouldn't fit on here. So, see, it wouldn't fit in here, so we only can't fit in here, which makes everything so much easier. Still, make sure that all the O rings are still attached because if, they, if you don't, then DDT won't work properly, and more likely, it's going to end up pouring all your oil all over the engine sometimes they do get stuck to the to this cover when you pull them off it's the covers on put this back on as well Easier to put it on now before the engine mount goes on. A bit more room to maneuver. I'm not going to put that in yet until I pop the engine mount back on. Engine sits a wee bit high. Should be okay for now.
Now I need the gun. Right. Now we can drop the engine a bit more now. Let's see. The aircon pipe can go back on now. Wouldn't be helpful if that would click in. That's it. Oh, look at that. We've got some spare parts now. <laughs> Luckily, they came brand new with the kit. So we don't need them anymore. Right, and that's it. The chain is on. Next thing I'm going to do, because I uh, don't need a jack under the sump any longer, I'm going to drain the rest of the oil that hasn't drained. And change the oil filter while I'm at it. Let's get my square drive again. I only nipped up the sump plunk and release the rest of the filter. I mean, <laughs> the rest of the fluid. Yeah, see, I felt like everything came out, but. When you open it again, it just comes out quite a bit. So, and now we can drain the oil filter also. Look at the state of this oil filter, all crumpled. That has not been changed for a long time. <laughs> no wonder the chain was rattling. Now I have a half a chance of keeping the chain from rattling. With all great brake cleaners work for everything. Mm. Mm, they're still around normally when they haven't been changed for a long time, they become like square shape almost. Mm, this is still round, but it was leaking a bit. But I'm not sure if it was leaking from here or something else, but obviously when we replace that we'll have a we'll know for sure that it's not gonna be leaking from here. And the front cover was resealed also. So if there is an oil leak somewhere else, we'll be able to find it now. Nice and clean. New seal. Let's pop that back on. Some plugs done up. We can put all the horrible bits back on. I all these mud guards. 
you have to pull that off to be able to push that back in. I remember the first time I've tried to get them out, feeding it from underneath, and all you needed to do is just undo one little screw, all of that pops off, and then all of that comes out quite easily. way you don't really even need to take the wheel off well, unless you really want to I like to do things quicker and uh, the less things to remove the better that's my psychology <laughs> not all shortcuts all the shortcuts sometimes without removing certain things you end up doing it twice as long Yeah, let's pop some oil in. How many meters are you going to put? Uh, I'm going to put about four and then I measure it because uh, I don't like overfilling them. Because to overfill, you have to then undo it all, undo trays off to drain that one half a liter off or something. That's right. It's better to under underfill it, start it up, let it settle, and then check it. And if need be, top up. Unless it's pouring down with rain, then you don't want to do anything anyway. There you go. That's our four liters done. And we'll finish just before the... I'm not going to bother checking the oil level. Mm. Same thing, you can see, start to rain, nearly there, then you get And that's our engine back together. Covers are on. I put some oil in, probably about four liters in. No rattle. It's purring like a kitten. And that's with oil pressure low, just changed the oil so everything was running dry and there was still no rattling. And that oil, I mean that previous chain was running with in oil, with plenty of oil in the car, and it was rattling not very nicely. Right. I would obviously suggest to leave the silicone to dry uh, over like maybe you know overnight or something once you've done the once you've done it so so it's all set so you'll have a the longer you leave it the, the less chances you will have to uh, to have an oil leak depends on what sort of a silicone you've got because this silicone is as far as drying so it's a really good one so it dries off within half an hour so by the time I put all the covers on and all that lot, so it's more or less 
dry enough but i wouldn't risk you take it on a test drive yet to hot, heat it up until it's properly hot for another until probably in the morning so little run so so oil level is settled is fine but in the morning that will be fully cured and uh, and if there is an oil pressure that won't push push through that oil uh, silicon barrier well while it's tacky wet if there is a pressure oil pressure that will blow it up same with the coolant if you put that cool uh, if you seal the water pump with it mm, yeah you have to wait until it dries off otherwise your water pressure will blow blow the silicone out right let's check the oil level now just there so we need to put some more in see I much prefer doing that way than overfill and then draining <laughs> uh, it does take around five liters but I don't know Oh, four or five liters and gone in. Oh, just below the maximum. My perfect hot, you know, sweet spot for the maximum. I know on certain vehicles, for example, Mercedes Sprinters, fill them to the maximum. I can guarantee as soon as you start driving, the dash will start flashing at you. You've got too much oil and uh yeah go figure so it's best to keep it just below maximum and that's my favorite sp sweet spot actually on the sprinters is actually has to be between minimum and maximum but that's that's for another video right and that's that's our nice cash guy all done not rattly anymore it sounds sweet we had a nice fresh oil change so now we'll have a now we'll have a um uh, you will have a nice um, breath of life basically we'll have a yeah the customer will 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 feel like he's going he's got a brand new car yeah well thank you for watching and uh please subscribe like comment and then um yeah, we'll see you next video. Thank you very much. Ta-ra-ba now.